I'm Varkha Chulani, clinical psychologist and psychotherapist of the Lilavati Hospital, Mumbai. Thank you for being here today. So when I heard the topic was finally decided as intrinsic happiness, I went running to my dictionary and looked for the meaning of intrinsic. I know, imagine, a person accomplished enough to be invited to give a TED talk, not knowing the meaning of intrinsic. As I was pouring the dictionary, or rather into the dictionary, suddenly my feelings of feeling very indifferent and blasé changed and I began to feel engaged, absorbed and happy. And hey, how did that happen? Suddenly my mood, so to speak, had changed. But hang on, why was I getting distracted? Anyway, as I went along and looked for the meaning, I found that intrinsic had two distinct meanings. The first meaning of intrinsic was relating to the essential qualities or features of something or someone. Some examples could be anecdotes are intrinsic to making lectures interesting. And another example could be good service is intrinsic to running a successful business. So one meaning of intrinsic was relating to the essential qualities or features of something. Then I looked further and the second meaning of intrinsic was belonging to the essential constituents or a nature of a thing. Some examples could be the intrinsic brightness of a star, the intrinsic worth of a gem. So when I closed the dictionary, I realized there were two distinctive meanings relating to a features of a thing and belonging to the essential nature of a thing. I scratched my brains and asked, which of these two meanings of intrinsic would I like to use in today's topic, intrinsic happiness? Shall I say what is central to happiness and talk about the essential features or ingredients required to live a happy life? the way air is needed for life or like a mother's love is intrinsic. Shall I talk about the inherent, innate possibilities that can exist within us human beings to be happy? When I thought further, I realized that both the meanings intrinsic to and inherent and innate were applicable to the topic intrinsic happiness. So I decided to use both and I have done today a distinctive categorization what is intrinsic to happiness that means what is central to leading a happy life and can happiness be innate or inherent so I have broken up the talk into two distinctive categories so let's start with the first what is central to happiness or what is intrinsic to happiness there are material conditions for happiness. What does that mean? Bertrand Russell, a famous philosopher said, man is an animal and his happiness depends on his physiology more than he would like to think. What did he mean by that? So the first prerequisite to leading a happy life is good health. We cannot ignore the fact of how important health is to feeling happy. When you are ill, sick, in pain, and if ever on a hospital bed, you and me will find it extremely difficult to concurrently feel happy at the same time. So the first requisite or the essential feature to live a happy life is to have good health. Now, let's see the next picture. Look at this. And now, look at this. In the first, you see extremely challenging and a very, very difficult environment. In the second, you see a relatively comfortable environment. Who do you think among these two people has a higher probability of being happy? Obviously, the person who's in a much better place 
in his environment in this case this rather than this so the second requisite to be able to lead a happy life is to have a reasonably comfortable existence now let me show you another picture look at this and now look at this who among these two would possibly have a possibly higher chance of being happy a person who's crouching and possibly has been starving of hunger or a person who has adequate enough to fill his stomach satiation makes or increases the chance of our happiness now let me show you another picture look at this a war stricken zone and a relatively safe existence who do you think here would have a higher chance of leading a happier life a person who lives in environmental conditions of war strife and stress or a person who possibly has a largely safe existence so if you see so the essentials or intrinsic to happiness are good health a relatively comfortable environment some food in our stomachs and a possibly safe existence when all these four conditions are met we could say that we have the material conditions to happiness however who can forget the famous poet john milton who said in and of itself mind can make heaven out of hell or hell out of heaven why in spite of our materialistic conditions so many of us find it so hard to be happy because i remember mark twain's very famous sentence and what did he say he said my life is full of terrible misfortunes which never happen so if you need to lead an intrinsically healthy life first try and see that you have the conditions or the requisites to meet the material conditions required to be happy but as i said happiness also had and or rather intrinsic also had another meaning and that was it is inherent innate or is it internally possible for human beings to be intrinsically happy so let me go further and explain what i mean by the second part can happiness be inherent in inherent and innate in us so if you remember when i was talking about the first part i said that i was looking at the dictionary and suddenly from free, feeling blase my emotions had changed from fe to feeling engaged absorbed and happy so the first thing that i have learned about inherent happiness is something very interesting so as psychologists we always realize that people are born with certain dispositions some are born more optimistic they have an ability to see the glass half full some are born pessimistic they have an unfortunate ability to see the glass half empty is this what we mean by inherent and intrinsic happiness where optimists are happier than pessimists no in over 20 years of practice i have realized it's not about the glass being half full or half empty that makes for a happy life it is about the person's ability to refill that glass which usually allows for happiness so happiness is not on optimism or pessimism pessimism a happy person has a purpose to live he lives because of a reason or because of a point of view of doing achieving and if you've noticed people who are achieving and doing whether it's a surgeon at work a mother bearing her child or me talking to you we are unknowingly in our pursuit of achievement doing engaging and absorbing releasing in the brain one of the four happy hormones is dopamine so if you really want to be inherently 
and innately happy do engage pursue because by default the brain will release a very important happy hormone called dopamine now let me go to the next aspect of intrinsic happiness have you ever belonged to a group of people who do similar activities for example all your friends get together and watch say the world cup cricket in a friend's living room or you do salsa together and connect with music and dance or you go to a yoga class and every 2 3 uh, a weeks you do yoga in a group if you will see there is a common factor there a connect a belongingness a kind of association to a similar interest or an activity you would have noticed many times in your housing societies old people come down every evening and sit on the benches and chit chat and gossip and we wonder what are they talking about and we realize that they are having the time of their lives because the next happy hormone serotonin gets released when we feel that we belong we connect and we are in a community that pursues the same activity together so besides being pursuing and engaging in whatever you choose so that you release the hormone of dopamine belong to communities engage and see by default the happy hormone serotonin will also be released now comes to the third aspect of happiness intrinsic happiness when i work out i feel much better now it's not because i look fitter it's because when i'm working out the happy hormone endorphins get released and have you seen therefore in the recent past there is mushroom mushrooming of running clubs it is the runners high that people experience when they are working out and when they are running because by default again the neurotransmitter endorphin gets released in the body and also have you seen recently the advent of laughter clubs you will find that even the anticipation of comedy when you go to a comedy show already endorphins are beginning to release in your brain so physical activity is important and equally important is developing a sense of humor because if you don't develop a sense of humor you will develop an emotional tumor the next aspect to inherit intrinsic happiness is hugging and cuddling have you ever cuddled anyone come on your pet your lover and hopefully sometimes even yourself and you know what that touch and feel will release a very special very very special chemical i'll tell you what it's called but besides cuddling I'm sure many of you love spas and go for massages. What is that? When there is touch and feel in the body, there is a release of oxytocin. Dr. Paul Zak, an academician in America, also known as Dr. Love, has done significant research and spent a lot of his time on the hormone of oxytocin. What has he found? Hugging, kissing, cuddling, okay? He believes that the more we touch the more we connect the more we hug the more we cuddle there is an increase in oxytocin in the brain and that is your third happy hormone not only that he's also done research and he has seen when oxytocin is released in adequate amount there is what we call a kind of a monogamy a kind of a building of trust even between animals and humans so what you need to do besides hugging kissing and cuddling you also need to release oxytocin so that you can be sure that your girlfriend and your boyfriend won't cheat on you yes happiness is in the hormones by two ways or rather by four ways by engaging in something purposeful and finding a meaning to life you release dopamine by belonging to a community and coordinating with the same purpose okay you will release a uh, serotonin by becoming fitter and developing a sense of humor you will automatically evoke the neurotransmitter endorphin and of course by hugging and cuddling and kissing even yourself you will have an ability to release oxytocin but let me tell you happiness is a very personal thing 
it is extremely individualistic. What makes me happy may not necessarily make you happy. And it is for each one of us to discover what is our personal definition of happiness. Because happiness is doesn't have rights or wrongs. Every individual seeks out for himself or herself what his personal point of view, what his unique perspective to happiness is. Unfortunately, as human beings, we have a tendency to compare. We constantly look over another person's shoulder to see what they are up to and then we imitate. So many of us you will see taking up activities, interests, hobbies where actually we have no inherent interest in them at all. But we are like monkeys. Monkeys see, monkey do. We follow, we copy, we imitate because we are always worried about what our neighbor is up to. All happy people do not compare. In fact, they believe that comparison is an act of violence against oneself. How many of us really choose activities for the pure joy and pleasure they give? Very few. But you must know that people who pursue activities for the pure joy and thrill they give do so because they are very self-trusting, unique creatures. Unfortunately, the fear of missing out it's just not an acronym. It is real. The fear of missing out makes us followers. It makes us copy, imitate and does not allow us to choose things, purposes, pleasures for the pure inherent joy and satisfaction that they give us. Happy people are not externally driven. They are internally driven. They pursue, engage and do simply because they want to do so. They are leaders. They are not followers. They are not imitators because they have lived by the adage of Emerson, the great philosopher, who said, to envy is ignorance. To imitate is suicide. So if you really want to live a happy life, follow your own path. Create for you what is most important to you and actually cultivate the joy of missing out because then you will be inherently pursuing happiness for its own sake and imitation is not the sincerest form of flattery at least not for those who are in the pursuit of it so my suggestion if you want to live a happy life is very very simple what are they See that the essential ingredients to happiness are with you. Good health, a reasonably comfortable environment, enough food in your stomach and of course uh, the ability to engage and stimulate the hormones that are intrinsic or inherent within you. Serotonin, dopamine, endorphins and oxytocin. But more importantly, learn the courage or develop the courage to be you. Pursue things which are intrinsically and inherently important and joyful to you. Because happy people don't want to prove themselves. They want to enjoy themselves. And as Aristotle said, more often than not, happiness depends on ourselves. Thank you.